So if you've been following my Ultimate Bait Finesse series, then you should probably recognize this rod. The Queen Teton TTC as probably the ultimate bait finesse rod in the world today. And I say that because of the really, really radical lure ratings. Now this rod has a lure rating of 0.3 grams to 3 grams. So with lure ratings like that, this rod, when paired with the right reel, can easily cast this one gram trout magnet over 50 feet, as I've shown in previous videos. But the rod isn't perfect. There's a couple of things that I see wrong with it. First of all, it's kind of uncomfortable to cast with this super short little handle here. It looks cool, but when you're casting this thing, you can't really get a good grip on your rod and your reel. Paired with the fact that this blank is so thin, it just magnifies the big gap right there between the handle and the blank. And then second of all is the price. Now compared to its JDM bait finesse rivals, this rod at $120-ish dollars is an absolute steal. But the fact that this is a Chinese rod that you buy off AliExpress, a $120 Chinese rod puts people off. So when you go on AliExpress, you are looking to buy low cost affordable tackle and most rods for sale on AliExpress are under 50 bucks. And when you see something that's $120 and it's not a recognized JDM brand, then it kind of puts people off and I understand that. Only the truly hardcore bait finesse guys looking to cast the lightest lures possible would be considering a rod like this. But enter this rod right here. The super stunning Ace Hawk CU Double. Now, I've seen this rod for the last couple of months on AliExpress and I thought it looked kind of cool, but I never really looked into it until a couple of weeks ago. So I finally clicked on the link to check out the specifications on this rod. And then when I did that, I immediately pulled the trigger. So basically I bought this rod for three reasons. Now the first reason obviously is the looks. As you can see right there, this could be mistaken for a high-end JDM rod and nobody would be the wiser. You could stick Evergreen here or Mega Bass, Jackal, whatever, and nobody would question that this would be a very expensive JDM rod because it looks so good. It's got this really detailed four nut. It's got just enough gold accents to make it look classy. And have you ever seen a rod with brown EVA? It's got this gold band around the handle to kind of break that up. And it's got, at least on the this portion of the blank, a Shimano style high power X carbon tape wrap. So let's go over the specs real quick before we go over the other two reasons why I bought this rod. Now, this is a six foot long model and also comes in a five foot six. It's supposed to use either 24 or 30 ton Japanese graphite blanks. It's got Chinese sick rings with Fuji style K guides. And it's got a Fuji style ACS reel seat, which is my favorite reel seat from Fuji. Now the great thing about this reel seat is that it doesn't have that big gap between the reel seat and the blank. They've chosen to, you know, leave that out. And let me show you what I mean. 
So right here is the Stream Angler rod that I did a review on. I really, really like this rod, but you can see right here, it's got the same ACS style reel seat as the Ace Hawk, but it's got this ugly looking gap in between the blank and the reel seat. And yeah, it kind of catches your finger there if you if you palm like that. So the Ace Hawk doesn't have that, which is a big bonus. I didn't even know that until I got it. Now this thing comes with a really, really nice rod bag. And I say it's really nice because not only is it quality nylon, it's actually foam padded on the inside. You can feel the padding. If you can take a look at the graphics there, Ace Hawk double. And if you pay particular attention to this right here. So that graphic means that this rod here, just like a lot of other rods from AliExpress, comes with two different tips that gives you two different powers. Now the first tip is going to be the light power tip and that has a lure rating of 2 grams to 6 grams. But I'm not worried about that because I have a ton of rods that have better lure ratings than that. The second tip is the one I'm interested in and the second reason why I bought this rod. It's got an ultralight power rating but that lure rating is only 0.4, I'm sorry, only 0.5 grams to 4 grams. So that is nearly as low as that much more expensive Queen Teton. So this should, in theory, be able to cast that 1 gram trout magnet, and we're going to put that to the test. Now speaking of price, that's the third reason why I bought this rod is that the cost of this rod with all these features and extras is only $38 shipped and then the 5 foot 6 model is only $25 so you're looking at a third of the cost of the Queen Teton now granted the the rod rating is not as low but if it comes even close to casting a trout magnet as well as the Teton, then this would be literally the bargain of the century. So not only does it look good, it comes with an extra tip, so you basically get two rods in one, and you get that rod uh, sleeve that's really nice. So how will we find out if this thing will cast a one gram trout magnet? We're gonna go fishing, of course. Okay, guys, so we are out here with the Ace Hawk CU Double, and I have the uh, ultralight tip on, so that means the lure rating is gonna be 0.5 grams to 4 grams tops. And we're gonna be trying to put this rod to the test see how low it can throw. Ultimately I'm going to see how it handles a bare trout magnet. So I have the Ultimate BFS reel with the Ultimate BFS spool and two pound trout magnet mono. So I'm out here at this marina and this marina has a whole bunch of different fish and some really big ones too. So if I get into something really big I could be in trouble but it should be fun at the same time so we're gonna start out all right we're gonna start out throwing the lucky craft pointer 48 okay so immediately this rod feels much better than that Queen Teton with that minus minuscule handle that it has this full grip even though it's kind of thin feels really really good I got the Aldebaran set up to number five. And uh, let's see what happens. So 
So immediately I can tell that the rod is not as stiff as that Kuying Teton. Kuying Teton is stiff all the way up to probably the last four or five inches of the tip and the tip is really flexible. This is flexible. Let me see if I can show you guys the taper without breaking this line. Hopefully that'll show up on the camera, but it's a little bit more flexible farther down the, down the blank. So this little lure weighs about 2.2 grams. So the rod is loading it up with zero problems. So any little panfish that takes this lure is going to be a pretty fun fight. Ooh, I thought I had a hit. Oh, I do. All right, first fish on the ace hawk is some little bass. It's barely bigger than the damn lure itself. All right, can't say that that was too fun. Maybe we can entice some bigger fish. So immediately, I feel way more comfortable casting on this rod versus the Teton. The Teton, you have to kind of hold it weird and you can't really cast it as comfortably as you would want because you're afraid that the rod and reel combo would just fly out of your hands and into the water. With this, I don't have any kind of fear of that at all. Fire this little jerk bait out there. Don't have any issues. Accuracy is awesome. Let's just see if we can get some fish. Oh, oh crap, I got a good crappie. Oh, he's running. He's hooked good. That's the great thing about this place. You never know what you're going to catch here. It's pretty decent crappie, at least for me. There you go. <laughs> okay, now see if I can get this guy unhooked. All right, guys, second fish on the fish hawk. A little, looks like a block crappie. Fought really good on this rod. That was really fun. Just a flick of the wrist, I can hit just about any spot that I want. That's awesome. So this Ace Hawk, while it doesn't have quite as low a lure rating, at least on paper, than the Teton. It more than makes up for it by being more flexible. Okay, so now we're switching up to a Kitech Easy Shiner 2 inch on a 30 second ounce head. This thing probably weighs barely two grams.
Oh, got something. Little bass. Or is that a sunfish? Man, that's a pretty bluegill. Check this guy out. He has got some of the bluest gills I've ever seen. Almost got him in the eye too, that hook. Let's see if we can get him unhooked. Here's another. What is this? Little bass. Oh, damn, he came off. Ooh, another crappie. Could be the same damn crappie. Pretty fish. Okay guys, so apparently last week I got caught up in the excitement of the spawn and I totally forgot to see if the Ace Hawk rod can handle the trout magnet. So I got one tied on and also as a bonus, I'm going to see if it can handle the trout slayer, which is made by the same company Leland Lures and it's basically just a teeny tiny craw imitation and if it can handle the trout magnet it can definitely handle this because this is probably twice as heavy as that trout magnet plastic but uh, let's see what happens so I got the same two pound line and the tip shaking the tip here it looks like not flexing quite as much as that uh, Teton, but let's find out what happens. So got the brakes set to five on the Aldebaran. And uh, I know there's panfish in here, so maybe you might be able to catch a couple of fish. All right, so not too bad, actually probably looking at about 30 foot and the accuracy was pretty good I was kind of aiming ahead of me it didn't pull off to the left okay that went off to the left a little bit but yeah that is definitely doable this is a bear trout magnet with no snap swivel hopefully you guys can see where this thing is landing spool is super controlled let's see if you can handle an overhead cast okay this handles the overhead cast of the trout magnet way better than the Teton the Teton is so stiff that uh, yeah the trout magnet is too light to do overhead cast but this rod is definitely a little more flexible but yeah, this is uh, handling the trout magnet with no problem. And I think 
also what's helping is just the the comfort of this full grip here right I'm really comfortable in swinging this rod and it doesn't feel like the whole combo is gonna go flying off in the pond okay let's try another one okay much better now you still have to adjust your release point to get the accuracy down just right but that's going out there I think that probably went about 40 foot okay so I'm gonna turn the brakes down okay had a little bit of a fluff up there nothing too major but the lure went out there a damn good ways for having the rod tip be so thick. What am I snagged on? All right, I got it. Okay, it's starting to rain a little bit, but we're gonna keep on fishing. Okay, wow. I would take this out on the field and do some measurements to see how far this is casting. But uh, I think we just found the ultimate budget bait finesse rod right here, guys. And it looks so good, too. Now, what's much better about this Ace Hawk over the Teton? is the ability to cast the trout magnet overhead so the accuracy is much better and this is only it's less than forty dollars guys this rod is less than forty dollars oh crap i see a bass over there bass over there is eating eating some minnows I saw him flash it was pretty big probably at two pounds so I think if I actually snag this guy or hook him he's probably gonna break me off so I think I'm gonna go back down to five on the brakes Okay. Much better. Now I don't have to worry about any kind of backlashes or blow ups. All right, guys, that's going out at least 35 foot. Damn it, it's starting to rain. I'm going to head in the car and wait out this rain. Got one, whatever this is. Damn, it's a nice bass. Oh, fuck, you can't. Almost. Damn it, these little hooks. Hope you guys saw that. Got another. If 
feels like he's hooked good. It's a little bass. Okay, this little bass fought so good. Look at all this crap on the line. Okay, anyway, on the trout magnet, he's got some wounds on him. Looks like he's been pecked in the head, right in the corner of the mouth with the trout magnet. So these things really do catch everything and let him go. Okay guys, so now that we know that the trout magnet can be cast and it does catch fish, we are gonna try out the trout slayer. And I don't know how much this weighs, but I will put it on the scale and put a picture up for you guys. But I suspect it'll cast significantly better than the trout magnet see if a bass will take this. It's a tiny, tiny little crawfish bait. All right, the cast pretty good overhead. Oh, okay, it cast a little bit better. I don't see much of a difference in distance. Maybe I can go down on the brakes. Okay, distance, probably an extra few feet or so over the trout magnet, but the Ace Hawk rod handles it with no problems at all. Okay, accuracy is definitely easier on this trout slayer. But this uh, Ace Hawk rod is turning out to be a gem. It's turning out to be one of those reels or pieces of tackle that you get a lot more than you paid for. Feels like a panfish. Yep, it's a little panfish. Okay, guys, as you can see, the Ace Hawk rod passed its test with flying colors. Now, as you can see, it handled ultralight lures with zero effort. In fact, the heaviest lure I threw was only 2.2 grams. And more importantly, it handled casting this not even one gram trout magnet with no problem. Now, of course, this reel had a lot to do with that as well. And ultimately, the distance casting the trout magnet was a little bit short of what the Queen Teton could do. I think this probably was getting around 40 to 45 foot, maybe a little bit more, while the Teton can average probably a little over 50 foot. The way it did it was just a lot more comfortable, in my opinion, than the Teton. And the reason being is that the blank is ultimately more flexible than that Teton. And then a big factor was this full handle that I could comfortably grip and cast as hard as I could without fear of chucking this combo into the lake. So with the Ace Hawk performing so good, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the 5'6 model. And then 
pick up another six foot model just for backup. As you can see, matched up with this Aldebaran with the Gold Avail spool, it looks like a match made in heaven. The colors match perfectly. But a lot of you guys are not interested in casting one gram child magnets. And a lot of you guys are not willing to, you know, spend 450 plus dollars to put together a reel like this to be able to cast a trout magnet. Now for you guys, I have something special. I have a reel that just came in a couple of days ago from China. And I'm going to pair that up with this rod and see if we can make the ultimate budget bait finesse combo. So be out on the lookout for that unboxing and review. Okay guys, thanks a lot.